And John Sawa would often begin his meditation instructions by saying, get your mind in order, get your body in order. For the body, make sure you're sitting up straight in a position you can hold for a while. And as for the mind, look to see if it's leaning forward or back. In other words, is it leading to the future or leading to the past? Try to bring it right here. Then ask yourself, are you leading to the left or the right, things you like or things you don't like? If you're focusing on things you don't like, let them go for the time being. Focus on what's good in the mind right now. The mind can settle down. Find any spot in the body where it feels okay. Let it stay there. And then breathe in a way that lets that sense of okay stay. Because when it can stay, then it can grow. It's like planting a seed. If you keep moving the seed around, it never gets a chance to grow. It's just going to stay a little seed, and after a while it may die. But if you leave it in one place, give it sun, give it rain, after a while it can begin to grow. So that sense of okay becomes better than okay. And try to find the right balance in keeping your attention with it. Don't tighten up around it, because if you tighten up, you're tightening up your sense of comfort, and that's not going to be comfortable at all. Let there be a sense of openness around it, so that it has a chance to grow. Keep that perception in mind, because it's the perception that works together with the feeling that's going to begin to take what good you have in the mind already and allow it to grow. It's a little thing. Just a sense of okay, but you can let it grow and turn into something bigger. After all, think of the Buddha's teachings on dhatu, or elements, or properties. We have potentials in the body, we have potentials in the mind. We're not just sitting here having to put up with whatever comes at us. We can take an active role in shaping things. While I was sick, I was listening to some Dharma talks, and some of them were really frustrating. I heard that the witness inside shouldn't pass judgment, shouldn't try to change anything at all, just sort of be okay with whatever's coming up. That's given the impression that the mind doesn't play an active role in shaping things. Or if it does try to play an active role, then it's wrong. That's certainly not what the Buddha taught. There are duties with regard to the Four Noble Truths. Now, the reason we have Four Noble Truths is because there are things we can do with regard to each of those truths. So see what you can do right now to take the potentials that you have right here and learn how to develop the good ones, let the other ones go. And a part of the mind says, well, this is not who I am. Remind yourself, you're not stuck with who you are. You learn new skills, you learn new habits. And you're going to change. If people couldn't change, the Buddha said he wouldn't have taught. So there's hope for all of us. We learn how to develop that sense of well-being inside and learn how to protect it as we go through the day. Then that becomes a source of strength. A strength that comes from within, that can withstand all the bad. Influences coming from outside.